The following presentation is from St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Oakland, Maryland. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Paul's United Methodist Church. We are a mission-oriented family on a journey of following Jesus in the Wesleyan tradition. Today, we celebrate 200 years of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, so we rejoice in that. If you're visiting with us today, we extend a warm welcome to you, and thank you for being our guest. We also welcome those following us on Facebook and listening to us on our radio ministry. Today's radio broadcast on WMSG 1050 AM and WKTZ 95.9 FM is sponsored by Reverend uh, Pastor uh, Ann Pruitt Barnett and her husband Mark to the glory of God and in honor of our 200th uh, anniversary of St. Paul's, uh, its people and its clergy. So thank you, Pastor Ann and Mark. Please join me in welcoming Bishop Sandra Steiner Ball of the Western Pennsylvania Conference as our guest preacher this morning. Along with Bishop Steiner Ball, we welcome several of our former pastors with us this morning. Reverend Ann Pruitt Barnett, Reverend Ann Harrison, Reverend Dr. Patrick Kerr, Reverend Dr. Matthew Paul, and Reverend Sam Wachter. We welcome Reverend Sam Moore. Sam did not serve as St. Paul's clergy, but rather was called to ministry from St. Paul's pews as a young person years ago. St. Paul supported Sam's education as Sam sought to fulfill his calling to full-time ministry. And we welcome through the miracle of media, our newly appointed Bishop of the West Virginia Conference, Bishop Deborah Wallace Paget. Bishop Wallace Paget prepared a video greeting for which we will see shortly. Also this morning, we will hear by the gift of recorded video, a message from the late Reverend Dr. Lawrence Sherwood, who will give meaning to our reredos, which is the structure behind us here at the altar. His words will connect the carved symbols on the columns of the reredos from the founding of our faith with the symbols which connect us with the founding of St. Paul's. Also, as a reminder, Rebecca Fallon has prepared a history of St. Paul's They're in a booklet located, it's booklet form located in the back of the sanctuary. You are welcome and encouraged to pick one up after the worship service. Let us now begin worship for the glory of God. Please stand as you're able as we sing this morning's hymn of praise.
You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, receive our praise and thanksgiving for the blessings, help, and comfort which you bestowed upon your people in this place from its foundation. Continue, we pray, your many mercies in your church that we may be conscious at all times of your unchanging love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello, St. Paul United Methodist Church. I am Deborah Wallace Paget, resident bishop in the Houston and West Virginia conferences. I look forward to being with you in person sometime in the near future. I am glad that my dear friend, Bishop Sandra Steiner Ball, is present with you for this special service. Today, I want to congratulate you on your 200-year anniversary celebration. For two centuries, you have made a difference in your community and world. You continue to do more of the same day by day. Current examples, as I understand from talking with your district superintendent, include your support of House of the Carpenter, collection of 200 items each month, to support a school or nonprofit civic organization in your community, hosting Linton luncheons, and 100% contribution of your fair share each year. In addition, you are known for the quality worship services you offer in person on Facebook Live and through the local radio station. I am inspired by your five core values as you seek to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world through passionate worship, intentional faith development, risk-taking mission and service, radical hospitality, and extravagant generosity. Thank you, St. Paul United Methodist Church, for being Christ's presence in your community for the past 200 years. I am grateful for what God has done, is doing, and will continue to do in and through you. Have a great bicentennial celebration. A small Methodist class meeting through Isaac McCarty's expression of faith, we find ourselves worshiping 200 years later. Praise be to God. May we be bold to proclaim that the wilderness wilderness smiles in the light of Jesus Christ. This land is the one who went forth to be a witness unto all. Edward McCarty, the Reverend Edward McCarty, became a circuit rider in West Virginia, Ohio, and Iowa. When this church was built, renovated, in 1935, the rear doth was added to it. Beautiful carving about which members of this church need to know more. On the downward pylon here and across and on the upward pylon there is depicted the history of our movement beginning with eternity and ending with the Alpha and Omega. But at the very top of it are three things that deal with St. Paul's. The name given the church in 1891 by the then oldest member, Ralph Thayer. If you look at the pylon, you will see on this side a Bible and a sword the sword of the word, which is the personal emblem of St. Paul himself. On the other side, you see a cross, a heart, and an anchor, which depict one of St. Paul's tremendous sermons about faith, hope, and love. Faith by the cross, hope, by the anchor, love by the heart. But across the top, 
that tremendous call of St. Paul's, thou shalt be his witness unto all. You see that in the life of Isaac McCarty? You see that in the life of his son Edward who went forth not knowing where he was going? You see that coming down to us in such a tremendous call. Now one thing about that that we need really to understand, that word witness in the original language, it's martros, the stem word for martyr. It had, until the time of the early Christians, been simply a witness, like in judicial or other usages. But the Christians were so intent on giving their all, even though it made them a martyr, that the word which was only word for one who would give his all for the cause of Jesus the Christ. And so it happened that as you look at this tremendous word of St. Paul, you see imaged not only the past of the days of these heroes we have been proclaiming, but you see also your call, your call really to be a witness for the way of Jesus, to be a witness that costs you something, to be a witness that is not just a pew warmer, but one who gives and gives and gives. Indeed, the past does speak to us today, and this constant remind us before us as we worship is a constant reminder of the way by which each of us comes better to know our Lord and more faithfully to serve him. For you, be his witness unto all. dead and buried the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be moving from our praise to God, our lifting up, our love to God, to that time in the worship when we hear his word as he speaks to us through the scriptures. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the Spirit is read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Y'all may be seated. <laughs> the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful of heart, be strong, do not fear. and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be opened. Then the lame <clears throat> shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it be shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Beloved, how can this be?
for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is my joy and honor to be here as you celebrate 200 years. And I am here not just at your invitation. I've had that invitation for a long time to be here. Um, but also at the invitation of your new bishop, uh, Bishop Deborah Wallace Padgett. She is sorry she couldn't be here this morning, but when she came on board September 4th um, to West Virginia, she already had commitments. Um, at, I think in the Holston Conference um, when she was given this date for your anniversary service. But as you heard from the video, she is excited to be acquainted with you. She praises God for your mission and ministry and your leadership. And she is also excited about being your Episcopal leader and working with you in our connectional system across the West Virginia Conference and beyond. I do want to greet and recognize this morning your district superintendent and his family who is here, uh, Reverend uh, Scott Ferguson. Hi, Scott. Good to see you this morning um, as uh, we gather together for this wonderful celebration. And it's an honor to be among all these saints uh, this morning who have been a part of your story, your history in Christ throughout 200 years. This morning, I'd like to share a passage of scripture from 2 Timothy, uh, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers day and night. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love, and of self-discipline. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, we gather here with singing and praise and prayers, with greeting one another, with a reunion of the saints to celebrate. For your spirit has moved in this community among people who were attached to this community of faith for 200 years. Oh, how your spirit has moved through St. Paul's. How your spirit has moved to touch people with your life-giving grace. And so, Lord, we trust that you will continue to pour out your spirit upon us this days and in the days that follow. And as you pour out your spirit upon us, continue to push away those things that keep us from a closer and deeper walk with you, that we might be your greater witness and light to the world. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, congratulations once again. Congratulations. You've been growing in God's spirit for 200 years, growing in spirit and growing in mission and ministry for Christ is something to be celebrated. Today, we're taking time to remember the faithfulness 
of those who have gone before us on whose shoulders we stand and, and to think about our call, our continued call to be faithful disciples who move Christ's church into tomorrow. It was by faith that a community gathered here 200 years ago, and it is by faith that we will go and make disciples and spread the gospel story into this community. The only thing that can stop us is a lack of faithfulness to the calling to be Jesus' body here in Oakland, Maryland, in the Potomac Highlands, and beyond. Do you know what keeps us from being faithful? Do you know? Do you know what keeps us from growing in the spirit? Usually it's fear. Fear is the great immobilizer. It has frozen many people in their tracks and kept them from accomplishing all they were created to do and to be in God's kingdom. Fear caused the Israelites to grumble and complain as God was about to deliver them from Pharaoh's advancing army. Fear froze the armies of Israel before Goliath. It caused the disciples to wake up Jesus from his sleep amid a storm. It caused Peter to deny Jesus during the Passion, and it has been the reason many fail to be and do all that God has dreamed for them to be and to do. All of us have been immobilized by fear at some point in our lives. And our text this morning gives us some insight as to how we as Christians can keep fear at bay and continue to be effective servants in God's kingdom. As Paul sits in a cold and damp prison cell, facing certain death at the behest of the Roman Emperor Nero. He is preoccupied. And this is where we get, this is where the scripture for today starts. Paul in that cold and damp prison cell and his heart, mind, and spirit are preoccupied. Preoccupied by one thing and one thing alone, the forward movement of the gospel and the kingdom of God. And so uh, Paul is writing. He's writing to his young protege, Timothy, the person with whom he's worked and mentored and coached to follow behind him in this great work of God. And he writes to him about the essential things he will need as he carries on the work of God. Central to Paul's message is the preservation and the advancement of the gospel. Now, Timothy, if you've done any work on getting to know who Timothy is, Timothy, by personality and nature, is not one that we would normally deem fit for the task. Shy, timid, fearful by nature, Timothy would seem to be an unlikely candidate to assume the mantle of the great Apostle Paul. And yet, God does not see things as we see them. God looks at the heart. God sees us not based upon what we can do, but based upon what God can do through us. If you've ever felt inadequate for the task, if fear has ever gripped you, if you've ever felt like the passion of fire which once characterized your service to God has burned low and is in danger of going out, if you've ever found yourself spiritually dry, feeling alone and useless in God's kingdom, then there is a word of God for you today. A word of God for you. Our faithfulness 
And our ability to move out for Christ involves remembering what Jesus has done in our lives. Fear has trouble standing up to our experiences of God's grace. It is easier to be faithful to God when we take time to remember God's faithfulness to us, like we're doing here today, gathering for this anniversary and remembering all that God has done. We even set up our worship space to remember the cross, reminding us that God sent God's Son so that we might have life um, all that Dr. Sherwood shared with us the story. We gather and we remember about around these lights that were lit, that God, Christ, is present with us, lighting our path always, we remember here. The baptismal font, the place that we remembered that God invites us and welcomes us when we were yet children before we ever did our first kinds of accomplishments. Here, we remember, we remember that around the communion table that we are invited to be remembered with God and to be remembered with each other. The funny thing is, as humans, we have a tremendous capacity to forget. Have you noticed that? We forget that we are not where we are simply because of our own efforts. We forget what others have done for us. We forget what God has done for us and how God's spirit has moved through us. And we forget the grace and the love that will not get us go, let us go. And when we forget those things, when we forget all that God has done for us, we're tempted to believe that God has never used us and never will, and that word can't enters our vocabulary once again. Well, we can't do this. We can't accomplish this. We can't do this together. Paul points Timothy, the fearful one, the timid one, back to the things in this life that demonstrate God's hand on him and his ministry. Paul says, Timothy, I've seen a lot of Christians in my day, and from all of my experience, from all of my observation, son, you have the real thing. Yours is the genuine article. What an affirmation. What an affirmation to hear from someone like the apostle himself that his faith was recognizable and authentic. When was the last time you affirmed what you saw in someone else? How God's spirit was working in their lives. Faithfulness is also lived out by rekindling the gifts God has given us. Doubts and fears tend to call us to let the flame of passion, the fire for action, burn low in our lives. As Paul writes to young Timothy, he tells him that if he is going to assume his call, the responsibilities to which God has called him, he must keep the fire of passion alive in his heart. Timothy has been called by God to oversee the ministries of the church. Now, if the church at Ephesus was anything like most churches today, there were those in the church who questioned Timothy's authority, who questioned his ability to lead. I'm certain that you all haven't experienced that, have you? They caused him in the church to be fearful rather than faithful. So Paul calls on Timothy to resuscitate the fire of the gift that is within him, to fan back into flame his passion for ministry. 
The Greek word here, I'm going back, I'm, I'm, I'm conjuring up Lawrence, right? The Greek word here translated is to keep ablaze or to rekindle afresh. Literally, it means to keep the fire alive. Allow me to suggest four things on this anniversary Sunday that I believe will continuously add fuel to your fire and keep God's spirit burning brightly within you and in this congregation. Be strong in your walk, both in your walk with God and your walk with the family of God. We tend to grow cold when our quiet times with God fall by the wayside or when we cease to have fellowship and gather with other Christians. Our fellowship with God keeps us connected to the source of the fire. God has given us and other Christians that source, that spirit, to help fan the flame, to hold us accountable, to encourage us and to work alongside us. If you want the flame for ministry, the passion for service to burn hot within your spirit, you must stay strong in your walk. Be spiritual in your worship. We cannot allow what we do for Christ to become perfunctory or something we do just because we're supposed to do it. Worship should always be prepared for before you step in the door. Prayer, reading should always be prepared for and should always be personal and intimate. We should see it as a reflection of our love for God and we should expect an experience of Christ with us as we come to gather in worship. When what we do for God becomes more of a ritualistic practice than a relational passion, the fire within us will grow cold and die. Study God's word. It is nearly impossible to stay solid in your walk, to be spiritual in your worship, and to keep the fires alive when you do not spend time in the word of God if you want to keep the fire burning within you and within this community, study the word. It will ignite your soul. Be steady in your work. Examine your priorities. The world is filled with many good things to do, but God, through God's spirit, directs us and guides us in the things that are best and will have the greatest impact in your community in particular seasons and times. We are called to seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. If we stay focused on what God is calling us to do, our hearts will stay where they need to stay. Some of you here this morning, you can look back and you can remember a time in your life when things were different, when you had a deep, longing, a passionate fire within you to serve God, to accomplish something for God's people and kingdom, and then life happened. It didn't happen all at once, but rather it was a process. From over the course of the years, other things seemed to creep in, take your time and attention, and steal the passion from your soul. I suspect in most cases it was nothing dramatic, but rather over the years the fire for ministry, the passion for service, simply began to lo burn low. This morning, St. Paul's, this morning God is calling you to rekindle the flame to fan the embers back into a flame. God wants to use you, has created you with the spark, but you must fan that flame, rekindle the fire, keep the fire burning, and you will not give in to fear because fear is not in keeping with the Holy Spirit who lives within us. Of all the things, 
of which we need reminding. Perhaps the most important thing is this. We are not alone. Christ is with us. We have been given God's spirit, and God's spirit is not one of fear, but one of power and one of love. God does not call us to do things that we can accomplish without God. In fact, Jesus tells us that without him, we can do nothing. Timothy was fearful because the flame within him had burned low. The faith within him, therefore, was weak and in need of exercise. Did you hear that? Faith in need of exercise. Timothy, as we do, need to be reminded that we have been possessed by God's spirit, which is one of power, one of love, and one that does not sit still. So, what is most important for us to remember on this anniversary Sunday as we hear about Paul and Timothy and their relationship? Why does that beginning of that letter have for us? Be an encourager. For some morbid reasons, our human nature seems to be more delighted when others fail than when they succeed. This is not in keeping with God's spirit. As Christians, we're here to support one another, to hold one another up in prayer and encouragement. Look around you. No, seriously now, look around you at the people sitting beside you, around you. Look around you. Look around you. Take note of the people God has brought into your life, and you will find there those who need a word of encouragement from you. Someone in this place needs to hear what you see God working in them today. Take note of the people around you those who have been paralyzed by fear or doubt. God has sent you to them as God's messenger to encourage and strengthen them, like Paul, be an encourager to our Timothys. Be mindful of the past. Look back on where you are and where you have been. Has God not always been faithful to you? This morning, God is calling upon each one of us to look at all that God has done through you. Celebrate. Remember that God, who has been faithful, will forever be faithful. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Be active in the present and in the days to come. Stepping out in faith involves action. You may be here this morning and God has given you clear instructions, shown you what God wants to accomplish through you, but you've not moved. Keeping you from the blessings that God intends for you and for this community. This morning, God is calling you, telling you to exercise your faith, to step out in action. And as you exercise your faith, as you put that faith into action, you will fan the flame not only for yourself, but for the others you impact and be reliant on the spirit. This is the spiritual realm where we walk by faith and not by sight, where we trust in God and not ourselves, where we are not calculating our success based on what we can do, but rather by what we know God can do through us as we yield to God's spirit and trust in God's strength. You have been given the spirit of the living God. This God is in you. This God who gave his son is for you and will give you confidence, victory, and triumph. Our God wants to do great things through you today and tomorrow and in the days to come to lead you to places you could never go on your own, to do things you thought humanly impossible. 
Christ, God, has given you the spirit to enable you, to equip you, and to empower you for ministry. Church, it's been 200 years, yes, and God is not done with us yet. So when dark whispers of the enemy try to freeze your very soul, when the shadows of fear cast darkness across your path, trust in God. Look to Jesus. Step out in faith to share with those who do not know what Jesus has done for you and invite them into the transformational journey the only transformational journey that leads, indeed, to resurrection, hope, and new life. May it be so. May it be so for another 200 years and beyond. Amen. Christ our Lord welcomes to his table all who love him, those who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way of peace. Come into the brokenness of our lives and our land with your healing love. Help us to be willing to bow before you in true repentance and to bow to one another in real forgiveness. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, melt our hard hearts and consume the pride and prejudice which separates us. Fill us, O Lord, with your perfect love, which casts out our fear and bind us together in that unity which you share with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Hear the good news. Christ died for us so that we might know peace and reconciliation with God and one another. Glory to God. We are forgiven in the name of Jesus. So how is it with your soul?
Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please stand and offer signs of peace to, to one another. Our God has bestowed upon us a legacy of proclaiming Christ in the wilderness. May our gifts, tithes, and offerings help continue a Christ-centered ministry, giving glory to God. Please come forward. As we sing, the first verse will be sung by me, the second by a few of our past members and leaders, and then in verses three and four, we ask you to, to join in in this hymn, What Gift Can We Bring? Yeah. 
be seated. This is Christ's table, not our own, and all are welcome uh, to this table and to this feast. In fact, some people meet Christ for the first time at this open table. So all are invited to come and let us join in the great thanksgiving, remembering and connecting with what God has done for us and what God calls us to do with each other. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give thanks to give our thanks in Christ. Blessed are you, our Alpha and Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe, for with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people, Israel, and spoke through your prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. You called forth those who, out of love for you, established this congregation, and those who have nurtured and sustained it to this day. They planted and watered, but you gave the growth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those of us who have gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those who have worshiped visibly in this holy place and now worship here invisibly in Christ. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Join now as we pray together that great prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ and reminds us that as human beings, we do make mistakes. But the cup of the new covenant is always available to us. God always provides new pathways for the people who search. The table is prepared. All are welcome to this place.
We give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus, our, our Lord. Amen. Let us remember the brave and believing people and pastors who brought God's message to this place. Let us not forget them. By their energies, this congregation was gathered, given order, built up, and continued. We remember them with thanksgiving. Follow as they followed in the way, truth, and life of Jesus Christ, the head of the church. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. Listen, my people, to my teaching. Tilt your ears toward the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a proverb. I'll declare riddles from days long gone, ones that we've heard and learned about, ones that our ancestors told us. We won't hide them from their descendants. We'll tell the next generation all about the praise due the Lord and his strength, the wondrous works God has done. Now the dedication of St. Paul's time capsule. Shall we pray? Our triune God, creator, eternal word, and Holy Spirit, you inspired the founders of the community of faith we know as St. Paul's United Methodist Church and all who have followed even to this day. As we prepare this time capsule for future generations to find, we give thanks, eternal God, for all you have done to guide us to this moment to carry forward the legacy of our ancestors in faith. Bless this capsule and all that it contains, that it may be a blessing for future generations. May it bring glory to you as it serves to connect the past with the future. We have looked back and remembered, so let us look forward in hope and the promise we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Receive now this uh, dismissal and blessing. Let us depart in peace, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. Uh, for the, uh, uh, the ceremonial uh, placing of
capsule is placed, we will go directly across the street, uh, a, thir a third street here, and um, into St. Peter's Fellowship Hall um, for our banquet. Thank you. St. Paul's United Methodist Church. 